revenge. Revenge. I mean, what else are you going to call it, right? They, they took it away from the poor guy. He, he wasn't exactly destined to win, let, let's be honest, right? So they, they figured they had to do something. They put Kamala in the seat. Now he's out there in Pennsylvania. He's supposed to be campaigning for her. He's at a firehouse. I showed you some of this yesterday in real time, and I'm like, wait a second, is this real? Like, let's make sure it's not AI. Let's make sure that this is totally 1,000% real, et cetera. Oh, it's real, baby, it's real. And the White House is saying, well, he's just showing his bipartisanship. <laughs> yeah, right, okay? I've known a lot of people that have known Joe Biden for a long time, and he's not exactly warm and fuzzy. And he holds grudges, I'm told, for a really long time. So it may just have a little something to do with this move. Look at this video. You can hear Presidential hat. Presidential seal on it. You're autograph it? Oh, sure, I'll autograph it. Yeah, I'll autograph it. Yeah, I'll autograph it. Huh? Yeah, I'll autograph it. You remember autograph your name? I don't remember my name. I'm slow. Well, you're an old part. <laughs> you're an old part. Yeah, I know, man. I'm an old guy. <laughs> and you're an old person. Uh, I know you would know about that. What? I'm being old. Oh, I know. All right. I'm a young timer. Huh? And who reminds me of the guys I grew up with? There was always one in the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the only one. There you go, man. I need, I need that hat. You want my autograph? Hell no. <laughs> you know, you know my name. Hello. Hello. Come on. I ain't going that far. Yeah. You can do a selfie. There you go. Yeah. 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 Hey. I'm proud of you now. <laughs> can, can we go back and see? Look at that. Here we go. Let's, let's watch it again. He actually put it on. You can do a selfie. There you go. And then he said, hey, remember, just don't eat dogs and cats. So he's sort of trying to make fun of Donald Trump there. But that's pretty remarkable. Okay, that, 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 I'm just going to say that's really, really remarkable. I, I don't know if we've ever seen that in politics before. So many of you guys, I, I, again, I played part of this yesterday. Not as good a shot, not as good an angle. We got a better piece of video in today, so I had to share that with you. But so many of you were like, oh, wow, it's like the first time Joe said anything that made sense. It's the first time I've actually liked Joe. The problem for the Democrat Party is that when you take out a guy like that, and understandably, I felt like they, they felt they had to. I, I still think they should have primary them, right? That would have been the logical, appropriate thing to do way back when, but they didn't do that. So they made the decision very late in the game that they had to take him out and they did that. And listen, like Americans, they aren't really okay with that. And some tried into Democrats that were going to vote for Joe Biden feel like there was an old switcheroo and they don't really like it, which is why he's polling so poorly with men, specifically white, older men that Joe might have been able to, to bring in. So she can't win a poll in Pennsylvania. I mean, I think Trump's right. I think Joe Biden hates Kamala Harris. And that's why you see him in Pennsylvania donning a Trump hat. This is Donald Trump in the debate saying what I think we know. When this week pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago that if he weren't in that debate he'd be running instead of her she got no votes he got 14 million votes what you did you talk about a threat to democracy he got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office and you know what i'll give you a little secret he hates her he can't stand her Mr. but he President. got 14 million votes they threw him out she got zero votes and when she ran she was the first one to leave because she failed and now she's running. I don't understand it, Mr. but I'm President, okay with it because Your time is I up. think Thank we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get to. <laughs> Turn it. In other words, he really hates her. He really hates her. But, you know, for good reason, probably. I think I know why he hates her, guys. I think it's because it has a little something to do with that 2020 debate. 
Remember when she just started attacking him really viciously? She said some really, really heinous stuff, and I think I have it for you. I want to play. A little walk down memory lane so we can understand the real reason why Joe Biden hates Kamala Harris. Okay, you hear her, guys? So she's jumping into the conversation. She's hijacking the conversation. She's got to speak on the issue of race. It's not what they're talking about. She interrupts all the monitors because, once again, this is Kamala Harris' mean girl who's going to take over the conversation and go for the jugular however she can. This didn't play out so well for her, and guess what? It's not playing out so well yet again. We're going to get to those polls momentarily, but first, understand why Joe Biden really hates Kamala Harris. that this is an issue that is still not being talked about truthfully and honestly. I, there is not a black man I know, be he a relative, a friend, or a coworker who has not been the subject of some form of profiling or discrimination. Growing up, my sister and I had to deal with the neighbor who told us her parents couldn't play with us because, she, because we were black. And I will say also that, that in this campaign, we've also heard, and I'm gonna now direct this at Vice President Biden, um, I do not believe you are a racist, and I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second Here we go. class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. So I will tell you that on this subject, it cannot be an intellectual debate among Democrats. We have to take it seriously. We have to act swiftly. As Attorney General of California, I was very proud to put in place a, a requirement that all my special agents would wear body cameras and keep those cameras on. Senator Harris, thank you. Vice President. Yeah, it got even worse because at some point she looks at him and she said, I don't believe you're a racist, Joe. But are you, are you really a racist? I mean, it was really kind of unbelievable. Dr. Jill Biden, his wife, was so angry and so offended by the whole thing that one would think Kamala Harris would not have wound up as vice president of the United States. She wouldn't have wound up on the top of the ticket with the likes of Joe Biden. But somehow, someone in the establishment kind of handpicked her. Obama, I'm looking at you. Handpicked her and said, that's going to be... Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket, and somehow Joe went along with it. And then what happens? Kamala Harris comes out from under and takes the gig away. So yeah, he kind of hates her. He absolutely hates her. And this is why he's out there in Pennsylvania willing to put on a Donald Trump hat. He knew. Hey, they're good. He knew full well what that would actually mean. He totally knew that it would be a huge disturbance. That you saw at a debate just a few months ago that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. He got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand her. A lot of truth on that stage, huh? Coming from one mouth there the other night. Anyway, it's showing up now in the polls. New polls just out today, including a prediction poll from Nate Silver, his Silver Bulletin, suggesting that, once again, Kamala Harris is going to lose the Electoral College. No wonder they want to get rid of the Electoral College. You know, who wants to have to fuss with the likes of four Electoral College votes from New Hampshire 
or 19 from Pennsylvania, when really you just want to count New York and California and call it a day. Well, anyway, these electoral votes are a little bit of a problem for her. I want to show you what just came in from Nate. Here we go. Take a look at that, you guys. This breaking, just moments ago, breaking news. You can see Donald Trump once again in the lead at this moment. He is down ever so slightly. I want to be very forthcoming, but look at that, 61.6%. That's the prediction model showing a 61.6% chance of Donald Trump winning the Electoral College versus Kamala Harris at 38 0.1%. So that is really pretty darn stunning. Now, I got to tell you, going into the debate on September 9th, we were looking at 64.4% Trump, 35.3% Harris. That was the biggest spread we had seen. So the spread has narrowed slightly. But keep in mind, the woman allegedly won the debate, according to all of the pundits out there. And the woman just secured Taylor Swift's endorsement, and still all she can pull off is a 38.1% chance of winning the whole shindig. I mean, Nate Silver, let me share with you what was put in Newsweek here. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I want to expand on this, guys, because they're basically saying, you know, look, the reason, or he's saying the reason she's not seeing perhaps more upside here is because she's not getting enough momentum out of each of these events. It's expected that she would get a lot of momentum, say, out of a Taylor Swift endorsement or a lot of momentum out of a debate that the pundits are saying she totally won, but she's not getting that. And so that's actually very concerning for the Democrats. I mean, they're kind of freaking out right now. I can tell you why she's not getting it, because you've got all these states, right, where the economy really matters, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, they're neck and neck. We all know that Donald Trump doesn't pull that well, right? So when you actually throw all these numbers into the prediction model, which is a little bit like a financial model, they're taking like, you know, thousands and thousands of different scenarios and trying to see in all of these scenarios where you wind up. And again, you're with a better than 60% chance now of Donald Trump winning the Electoral College. The other thing that's really of note is that they are now neck and neck, 49% to 49% chance of winning, according to Nate Silver's compilation, winning the popular vote. So Donald Trump had always been lagging behind in terms of getting the popular vote. Now he's neck and neck. So that actually certainly bodes well for him. Of course, all you need is the Electoral College, because if you get the Electoral College, then you won the whole thing. Then you're going to the Oval Office. And what's incredible right now is despite that debate, which all the pundits seem to think that she won, she's not actually picking up more momentum in that prediction poll. Again, anything can happen, and there's a lot of news events that are transpiring over the next couple of days. Some talk of maybe Travis Kelsey coming out. That would be Taylor's boyfriend for her. She's, very, um, she's doing very poorly, again, with white men. And in places like Pennsylvania, that's really and truly going to matter.